Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Travel Diary, New Zealand and Australia, 1956. This was originally published as small, the first part, or the majority part, of Smallshaw Family Memories Collection, or SFMC, number four, published on July 17, 1989. Now, Ruth uh, wrote letters to her mother about their, the trip that she and John, my parents, took uh, to New Zealand and Australia, and then she wrote an essay about it. Now, this is her act actual diary of the trip. An introduction to SFMC number four by John S. Ray. The World Meeting of Junior Chamber of Commerce was held in Wellington, New Zealand in the fall of 1956, and the Olympic Games were held in Melbourne, Australia immediately thereafter. I was president of the Cleveland Junior Chamber at the time, so Red and I had the good fortune to go to New Zealand since I was a delegate to the World Meeting. At that time, Cleveland was trying to get the Pan American Games, and the decision makers about where the Pan American Games were to be held were meeting at the Olympic Games in Melbourne. I was asked to serve as a special representative of the Cleveland Pan American Games Organizational Committee and attend the Olympic Games in Melbourne, Australia, and meet with the decision making committee and hopefully be able to tell them that the Cleveland bond issue in support of the Pan American Games had passed, which it did. I sent back daily copy of this trip to the Cleveland Plain Dealer newspaper and did not find out until we returned that the stories were not printed because the Plain Dealer was on strike while we were away. November 2, 1956. Packed Pamela, two and a half years, and Mark, three, almost four, and their belongings, and drove them to Grand Mall Rays in Sandusky, Ohio, a gorgeous, sunny, clear, warm day. The children were delighted with the prospect of staying with Grandma and didn't mind us leaving them. Mommy was a little sad. Had last-minute details to wind up in Cleveland. Then the Cleveland J.C.'s had a box supper social and farewell dance. A very foggy night, home by 2.30 a.m. and packed until 4.30 a.m. A Bon Voyage telegram arrived at 7.30 a.m. Packed, repacked, weighed, and reweighed until Bob and Audrey Nelson... Their three kitties and one expected came to drive us to the airport. Bill Lovell and son, Don and Char McQuilkin and little girl Leslie, Steve Bedecker, the 1955 president, Bill Harmon, Bob Becker, all J.C.'s, were out to wave farewell and take pictures. The Cleveland Junior Chamber of Commerce is sending their president, John S. Ray, to the Junior Chamber of Commerce International 11th World Congress in Wellington, New Zealand, and the Senior Chamber of Commerce is sending us to the Olympic Games in Melbourne, Australia. November, November 3rd, a beautiful, sunny, warm day, and a clear flight with beautiful clouds. Looked like the Antarctic outside. We changed planes in Denver, Colorado, where some snow was on the ground. We saw a few hills and mountains before darkness came down. In San Francisco, California, we stayed at the Canterbury Hotel, a quiet, nice hotel in Knob Hill. Steep hills, many interior decorating shops, fascinating atmosphere, hotels and mink stoles, a bite to eat and to bed. November 4th, lovely day, clear and sunny. Out for a Sunday morning breakfast at Sears. Fresh raspberries and 18 tiny Swedish pancakes. A wonderful breakfast. San Francisco, we find a very interesting city. The combination of Chinese with modern in the interior decorating windows and the many wonderful eating places. We took a tour of the city. The guide pointed out the part that was destroyed by fire and the street that was dynamited to prevent the spread of fire. We visited a lovely residential section. However, there is no more available building space, and most homes have very small lots. We saw Cliff House at Seal Rocks and went to a terrific smorgasbord down at Fisherman's Wharf. 
we had our first ride on a cable car. And in the evening, we went up to the Mark Hopkins Hotel, to the top of the Mark. This really made the trip worthwhile and was one of the most beautiful sights to look down all around at the city. Lights, harbor, hills, and bridges. The cocktail lounge with its huge sofas and dimly lit atmosphere provided a very romantic setting to view the city. November 5th, San Francisco Canterbury Hotel. Clear, fine, and warm. We went to have the suitcase handle fixed and did a little shopping, slippers for John, had brunch and went on a tour of Muir Woods, a damp, cool walk, interesting huge redwood trees. We saw more of the bridges, went over the Golden Gate Bridge, and saw Sing Sing Island from the distance. We saw more hillside homes and had a terrific apple pie and coffee at the station in Moor Woods. We got some slides, since it was too dark to take any. At the hotel, we saw many, many elderly women, obviously widows, well-to-do and well-dressed, living at the hotel. We had a terrific roast beef dinner. The men wore red coats, supposed to be an old English atmosphere, and we saw Adlai Stevenson on television. Very sad. The U.S. presidential election is tomorrow, and we know he'll lose. We packed and wrote cards. Then Wendell and Gene Ford arrived. He's the U.S. National Junior Chamber of Commerce president and his wife. They drove us for a view of the city to the airport. November 6th, Pan American Airways over the Pacific Ocean. Fine, and away we go. We had a pretty good sleep on the, on the airplane. A group of 15 JCs. Gene and I are the only wives. Hogue, the past international president from Cincinnati, Ohio. Fred Sutton, our tour director who really had his troubles, from Holland. Dr. Vargas from Honduras, Central America. Bill Laird from Minneapolis, who is trying to get, get the Congress site for 1958. We arrived in Hawaii at 7 o'clock a.m. How lovely and very hot. We were met by Hawaiian hula girls, and each presented us with orchid lays. We were photographed with Miss Hawaii, and a delegation of J.C.'s had a party arranged. Walt Lum and his girlfriend drove us around Honolulu, Hawaii. Today is election day and very colorful. We had pineapple juice and and wonderful sweet rolls. The girls had a special suite for us to tidy up. Very hospitable. We hate to leave Hawaii, but we'll be back. Now for a long flight all day. November 7th. We met an Australian director, Ludwig Bergen, just returning from England. During a whirlwind courtship, he became engaged to Miss Britain of 1955 and a starlet, Brenda Mee. Very excited. Martin Ashley and Hugh McKenna joined us in Hawaii. We had stops in the Fiji Islands at Nandi and Canton Island. Very exciting. So tropical. So native. Nandi had huge torches all around the ba- and bamboo walls. At the Fiji Mokambo Lounge, we had a buff- buffet served to us. Tea, fruits, and cookies. We're getting weary. We bought some, some slides. Hot, hot, hot. Fred Sutton thought he'd lost his passport. So that held up the airplane a few minutes till he found it. Another night to sleep on the airplane. Awoke at 5 o'clock a.m. and arrived in Auckland, New Zealand. Our first impressions were that it was a beautiful green rolling island with hills, blue waters, and streams. It seemed sort of like an outpost not very well inhabited. November 8th. Cold. We lost a day somewhere. The J.C.'s met us in Auckland. Nice fellows. We flew to Wellington after changing planes and had tea and crumpets. A bus took us from the airport a long, long trip to Wellington. Sheep and gorse, a yellow flowering weed, rolling country, a little wild looking. The people have very English accents and the weather is much colder than we expected. Wellington City was quite a surprise to us. It looked about 50 years behind the times. Very old buildings, mostly 
all small English make cars. Everyone very English speaking. Hotel St. George. Very, very cold. It's supposed to be one of the best hotels, but we have a bathroom, had a hot bath, and got foot cramps because it was so cold. The maid was popping in and out constantly. We went to town hall for the opening of the 11th World Congress of Junior Chamber. Of, Junior Chamber, Very formal. Jean and Wendell were up on stage. We met the cables afterwards. There was a trade exhibit and Maori dancers. It was cold, cold, cold. November 9th, Wellington, New Zealand. Cold. Jean and I went shopping. Can't even find cashmere s- sweaters. The prices seem high and the styles seem a little dated. From here on, it seems to be a round of changing clothes and trying to be places on time. We went to a lunch. We went to the luncheon for the New Ze- Zealand delegates and all wives. Soup, fish, cold meats, wine, and trifle with jello and fruits, setting a pattern for meals for the remainder of the Congress. I was on the Jack Maybe radio show. Jean did well. She sang White Christmas, didn't say yes or no to questions, and won two pounds and ten pair of stockings. I was terrible and sang Home on the Range and got one pound. We had a reception at the mayoral suite in Town Hall and met the mayor, Sir Robert McAllister and Lady McAllister. John presented him with a scroll from the mayor of Wellington, Ohio. The president took photographs. Jean and I took John and Wendell shopping and each bought a fur stole at the Regal Fur Salon. On to the dinner dance at the Winter Show Cabaret. Quite an occasion. The huge auditorium was decorated beautifully with a false fishnet ceiling with shells and items typical of New Zealand. A huge ten-foot stuffed moa bird greeted us and fern and fauna around the walls with three-dimensional views of New Zealand. We had dinner and wine, which went on and on and on. Soup, fish, cold meats, the works. We left about midnight, and they were still eating. We four were exhausted, a pattern to continue. Everyone wants our opinions of New Zealand. I wept at the thought of Mark's birthday. November 10th. Cool. Sure miss the kitties. The wife of the president of the New Zealand JCs had an 11 o'clock a.m. tea for Jean, Betty, Betty Berry from Australia, Eileen McAllister from Scotland, Joan Collins, Auckland, and I. We discussed sweaters, cake mixes, and traveling. After lunch, we had a scenic drive of Wellington and tea at the Pines. It poured down rain. We met Mrs. Cariana of Winnipeg, a girl who married a Maori and had four children. At 5.30, we went to the American Ambassador's cocktail party. Jean and Wendell were receiving with the American Ambassador. We met the Putaru VJCs, then to a home entertainment party at John and Shirley Cables in Lower Hat. Maori dancers entertained and gave us poise. We had a very nice buffet supper. Everyone sang Now is the Hour and Auld Lang Syne. November 11th, Wellington. Rainy, sunny, rainy, sunny. Very full day. We took the bus to Otaki where Reverend Hepa Taipa, a Maori Anglican minister, preached a sermon in Maori. He's also president of Otaki Junior Chamber of Commerce. Then a traditional Maori challenge and welcome. The international president, A. de O. Sales, accepted the challenge on behalf of all delegates. The Maori dances and Maori luncheon were cooked on hot stones and served in a huge tent. Then we had a bus trip to Palmerston North and had the worst coffee ever. The JCs welcomed us and then, all, and then we went to Master, Masterton and met the mayor, had supper and a takeoff on the Olympics. There were more speeches, bus riding, sheep, and gorse. John doesn't appreciate our 6.50 a.m. tea, nor the maids popping in unannounced. One caught him in the bathroom with only his razor. They just walk in. November 12th. 
John's mother's letter saying that the children are fine and to enjoy every minute of the trip is just what I needed. We had a 10.30 a.m. scenic tour of Hat Valley and luncheon, very modern drama library, community service building, and ultra-modern Anglican church. We saw Shirley's house from below. At 5.15 there was a reception at Government House. We were received by His Excellency the Governor General, Sir Willoughby Norrie and Lady Norrie. When they walked out and shut the door, all were supposed to leave. There was a wonderful view from the sitting room. We had a private chat with Lady Norrie and delegation parties in the evening. I slept through them. John attended briefly. We were exhausted. November 13th, fine and warm. At 9.30 a.m. I had my hair done with my head forward. There was a luncheon and fashion parade, also slips and nighties. I managed to do some shopping. Then a cocktail party at Town Hall. The New Zealand American Businessmen and Canadian Party. Then we went to Dr. Kohnfeld's home in Wellington, up on the hill. A lovely home and interesting pictures. There were Maori weapons. The Maori weapons were exciting and typical New Zealand paintings. Friendly people in conversation. Champagne, cold meats and ham, chicken, asparagus, rolls, savories, hot meat tarts, pavlova, passion fruit pie, also peach pavlova. I got the recipe from Mrs. Kohnfeld. We went up on Mount Victoria to view the city and see the Southern Cross. November 14th, Wellington, New Zealand. Fine weather. We went shopping. I bought books and toys for the children and rulers. There was an awards luncheon at the Blue Room, the National Art Gallery. The Putaruru Outstanding Award for Playground. Manila, Philippines for Cleaning Up Vice. Minneapolis Outstanding Local. There was a stand-up luncheon with a similar menu Wine, cold meats, chicken, savories, sandwiches. There was an art and craft exhibit of Maori race. Jean and I were on the radio again and had interviews. She told of Little White House, and I got off on the Cleveland Hearing and Speech Center why I went to the United States. In the elections, Ira K. won over Felipe of Mexico, and Minneapolis won over Vancouver as the next site. A surprise. Harold Berg was, a, was voted the Outstanding World JC. Dr. Vargas, one of the vice presidents. In the evening, we went to the Winter Show Cabaret again. First, we had dinner at the hotel, and then to a cocktail party given by Joan and Russ Collins in, in the lounge, then to the cabaret. We, I took slides of a moa bird and Jean Wendell and the cables a similar type dinner, dance, stretching into the late hours. Dancing, entertainment, presentations, more orchid lees. Jean has been a credit to the United States. She looks nice, makes friends, and everyone seems to like her. I wore my gold formal with and fur stole. I got a power shell. The cables again were very nice to us. I'm really tired tonight. Packing until 4.30 a.m. and up at 7 o'clock a.m. This has been a very full week. November 15th. We had a bus trip to Lake Taupo. Fine. Then we were off again on our World Congress bus. About 15 of us. Lovely scenery. Sheep, sheep, sheep and gorse. Lunch at the Taihapo was very awful. Bones, bones and poor gravy. The worst meal in my life. They have a bar and have to serve meals, but don't care what they serve. I got a sponge stone. Lake Taurus is lovely, a very modern hotel. Dinner and coffee in the lounge with the Collins and Fines. We saw three peaks on the way. Tonga Riro, 6,458 feet. Ruapeho, 9,175 feet. And Niaru Ruohe, 7,515 feet two of which are semi-active volcanoes. November 16th, we had a bus trip to Putaruru, New Zealand. Everyone took group pictures as we left. We went to Auka Falls and the, saw the Waraki Geyser Valley. 
Then we saw a lumber mill during the drive through extensive pine plantations. A long trip to Putaruru on the bus. I mentioned to John that I should look for Collins on the mailboxes on the roadside. A few seconds later, he spotted it. The house was surrounded by trees. The JCs met us at the Putaruru Hotel. Dorothy had already called, so we phoned her, and after dinner at the hotel, they came for us and took us out to their farm. They have 114 dairy cattle, and she seems very happy. They have four healthy children. November 17th. The bus left for Rotorua, the center of the most remarkable thermal region in the world. The Putaruru JCs had a social for us in a country hall. The gals were all dressed up. There were dances where the men and women exchanged. The men wore men's coats and ties, and the men wore earrings and rolled up pants, legs, Monte Carlo. There was a lunch and speeches. The Putaruru JCs saw us off in the morning after showing us the playground they built and got the, uh, the Outstanding Project Award. November 18th, on our last bus trip through New Zealand to Waitomo Caves, caverns under the ground caused by under, an underground river. We had the guide that showed Queen Elizabeth around and visited the Glow Worm Grotto. We went underground down the river in a large flat boat. In the silence, we saw millions of glowworms at the top of the cavern like stars in the sky. Quite inspiring. Then we had lunch at Hotel Waitomo, then drove via Te Awamutu, where the JCs had a huge sign. We saw a Mormon temple being built, then went through Hamilton, Ngaruawio, Huntley Pokeen, Bombay, and Papakura then arrived in Auckland at the Trans-Tasman Hotel. The JCs had a party planned, and I finished writing some cards. November 19th, Auckland to Sydney, Australia. Beautiful day. We went by bus to the airport, Wenuapai Airport, and left at 9 o'clock a.m. for Sydney. The JCs had a meeting to which Doc, Ford, Ira, etc. were whisked. Pan Am took the rest of us by taxi to a delightful hotel, Glen Asham, where we had a wonderful lunch overlooking the blue waters. We lunched in, gla- in a glassed-in veranda, had, and I had a plateful of oysters. On the plane to Melbourne, windy, windy, windy and cold greeted us. We were given visitor pins and signed autographs. The Scottish bagpipe band was playing, and there was great excitement in the air. We went by cab to the White House at Karam on the beach. Very, very cold. No heat. November 20th, Melbourne, Australia. Cold. I went, we went shopping. I bought Christmas cards and a lighter. Melbourne is decorated with huge Olympic torches and various displays. Many, many countries are representative. Represented. The prices were very high except for food and haircuts, but you can't take those home. John contacted Jimmy Lee from Cleveland and got his letter from Curtis Lee Smith. The bond issues passed. November 21st, Melbourne. The weather is fair, cloudy, fair. I worked on cards, then went, we went downtown into Hotel Australia for lunch with Jimmy Lee, then out to Heidelberg Village. Not everyone is allowed to enter, by permission only. This is a lovely modern housing development, built especially for the Olympic athlete. Nationality flags were flying by each housing section where athletes from those countries were staying. There's a shopping center provided provided in a temporary dining room. We watched an athlete practicing the discus throw, and John took many slides of the Russian girls practicing hurdle jumping. A Zatapak Olympic champ was practicing too. I was too exhausted to go with the others to Savoy Plaza. November 22nd, beautiful day, down on the beach with Jean. I worked on cards and got sunburned. We went to the opening day ceremonies at the Olympics. Very colorful ceremony. 
A flag of all nations flying from the grandstands and the Olympic flag in the middle of the grounds. The Duke of Edinburgh opened the Olympics. There were torch bearers who ran around the track and up into the stands to light the huge torch. We went to Canterbury to Harold Berg's home, the outstanding world JC, for a Thanksgiving dinner. Champagne and wine. The garden was lit and there was a swimming pool. Very nice. November 23rd. Another lovely day for the Olympics. We have excellent seats with the Fords right, right behind Bob Mathias, the last Olympics decathlon champion. We saw many Olympic records broken. There was a party at the Fords Cottage. Hugh and Doug Hogue are leaving in the morning. November 24th, Melbourne. Hot day. John gave his pitch for the Pan American Games for Cleveland at lunch with Jimmy Lee and his wife from Mexico at Hotel Australia. Before the day was over, he was injured in a car accident at Olympic Park. I cha- we changed and dressed in Mike's room, then with the Fords and Ralph Brown to dinner at Hotel Australia, then to Harold Berg's Olympic Party. Very nice party. The Fords, Sutton, Buckner left this morning for Honolulu. Ralph Brown, Olby Bailey, and Ira Kay left for Manila, Philippines. Doc Vargas, Mike Wilder, and I left for the botanical gardens and a swimming pool. Lovely modern pool built just for the Olympics. A fine addition to any city. We went to the zoo and saw koala bears and kangaroos. Then had dinner at Hotel Australia. John, Dr. Vargas, and I. November 25th. Cold and windy. This is our. This is the last day of our stay in Australia. We went shopping. I bought koala bears and wool stoles and mailed Christmas cards. At Olympic Park, Bob, Math- Bob Mathias again sat in front of us. We saw the Reverend Bob Richards better his own Olympic record in pole vaulting, a half an inch over his former record. We saw the world's javelin record shattered by an, Olymp- an athlete from Norway. Then we went to dinner at the Savoy Plaza with Mike Wilder, and there was a party at dinner at the Savoy Plaza, a Manila orchestra and floor show. Jesse Owens came to our table and autographed tickets to give to Terry. We went to bed by 2.30 a.m. November 26th, we got up at 5.30 and went to the airport with Doc and Mike Mike Milder, who left his tickets at the hotel, to Sydney. We stopped at the Fiji Islands, very hot in Nandi. November 27th, 5 o'clock a.m. to Canton Island. We saw the sunrise. John, John saw a crab and tropical fish. It was quite warm. Very exhausting trip. To Hawaii. Oh, how wonderful to be in Hawaii. Warm, clear, and beautiful. Martin Ashley and the other J.C.'s and Walt Lum met us. Then we met Jean and Wendell, just returning from a tour of the islands. We're all exhausted. A gorgeous room in the hotel. I washed my hair and went swimming. Oh, how good it feels. There was a cocktail party with wonderful fried shrimp. Everyone should visit Hawaii. Walt and his gal took us on a fabulous tour of the nightclubs, the beachcomber. The wonderful Hawaiian dancers, their rhythm, their beauty... The sight and sound of the surf pounding over the rocks. A night to remember. The diary ends here. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Good luck to you with your efforts in family history. If this interests you, finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, photographs, family movies, and videos, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive, you might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray, at peterjray.com. So far, we've made 662 history videos in seven areas. World history, American history, book reviews, excuse me,
Poetic Tours, Cleveland Baseball, Family History, and Autobiography. There's a donate feature. You might consider making a donation so that we can continue making these videos. You also might consider checking out our podcast, Adventures in History, at Anchor FM, Peter Ray, R-E-A. If you live in Metro Manila, Philippines, and are looking for a high school, excuse me, you might consider you might consider Russellust Educational Center. Russellust is located in San Juan, Metro Manila, Philippines, Barangay Maytunas on Allenby Street, not far from the intersection of P. Guevara and Wilson Street. At Russellust, we specialize in helping young people who have had difficulty in the larger traditional high schools and we are it's more than a school it's a warm supportive community and a family type environment and we try to be creative and innovative the the website is restcelest.education r-e-s-a-l-e-s-t thanks so much for watching i really appreciate it god bless you take care and i'll see you next time